gentlemen, and perhaps some ladies, which is not being sexist, it's just, if you are a lady, then you're a member of the coolest minority ever, so that's my compliment to you. I am so sorry. I am so thankful that I have gotten so many subscribers on these last couple of videos. I've been swamped, but today I got ratted out because I was doing some coding in my free time and happened to post it to YouTube, and one of you guys saw it and I felt bad. But seriously, it has been really busy. I'm in medical school and we're coming up on our cumulative finals and honestly I shouldn't be making this video right now, but I love you guys that much. This is how much I care. So anyways, let's get right to it. Um, last time we talked about ranges, braces, dash N, P, and D, and semicolon. So let's go ahead and get the ball rolling here. Oh, one thing I did want to mention. Last time some people got on my case about always piping uh, files into said with cat, which is not necessary. You can just use pipes like this. I just feel like cat would, is probably more simplistic for people who are new to bash, but you guys probably aren't, so yes, you can and should probably pipe in this way when you're reading and writing to files with said. So for instance, if I wanted to write to a poem from input, then poem has the same stuff as input. I think you guys get this. So. Um, Anyways, let's open up Vim and do our visual thing like we have done. I'm going to read in this command list and just delete out the things we've already done. And let's put our input up at the top. Let's make some things here. All right, equal sign. Equal sign is really easy. All, all it's doing is we're printing this and uh, we're pulling the first line into the pattern space. We're going to command. We're going to execute all the commands in between the quotes, right? So equal sign, it just prints out the current line number. So it puts a one here. Then we reach the end of the command, so we're gonna dump the pattern space out into the output. Then read in the next line, print the line number two, and then dump. So what you end up getting is one, is the line number for each line. So you may be able to jump ahead and, and think that if you use dash in here, you're going to get one, two, three, four, right? Likewise, if I did dollar equals, then this is a range, right? And this is a range for the last line number. So if I put dash in dollar equals, I will get the number of lines for the current file, which is kind of like word count or WC dash L. Um, but this is a little bit slower and a little bit more to type. So, but still, it shows you how flexible set is and how it can do a lot of cool things. All right, moving on. In, I didn't really show you last time, um, simply because I was running out of time, and because it's a little bit conf confusing to explain. Basically, what in does is it is what's already happening when you reach the end of the command execution. So in stands for next, and it goes to the next line. Um, but the reason that's confusing is if I pipe this into said in, I get the exact same output. So if you're new to said, you're like, okay, well, it's doing the exact same thing as if I had nothing in the quotes. What's the point of in? But that's not exactly true. And I can prove that to you by using the equal sign that I just taught you. And if you recall, the semicolon just separates the command so we can execute multiple com commands at the same time. It's similar to doing dash E um, on each of the, I'm not going to type it out, you'll understand what I'm talking about, or if you don't go to the last video. So anyways, this is going to prove to you that N is not the same as empty string because we get one and then we get lines one and two and then we get three and then we get lines three and four. And you already know that if I left this off, I'd get one, two, three, and four, all the numbers. But with it, I only get one and three. Why is that? That's because what in does is it explicitly tells said to go to the next line. So what's happening in this command is we're pulling this into the pattern space. 
Then we are going to execute all the commands in between the quotes, which right now is the equal sign, so we're going to print out line number one. And then we reach in, and what in does is tells it to explicitly go to the next line. And what that entails is dumping the pattern space to the output and pulling in the next line. Okay? So now, now we're going to reach the end of the command because there's no more commands to execute now since we just executed in and now we're at the end of the quotes so what said does by default when we reach the end of the quotes is print out to the pattern space and move to the next line so we kinda get a freebie right so that's why you only get one and three because now when we print out the current line number we're on line number three so hopefully that's making sense now another thing to keep in mind is that if you use dash in which perhaps this is why it's called dash in um, in has the same effect as the end of the command string so in this case it will not print to the output print the out pattern space to the output when it goes to the next line so what we end up getting is just the numbers okay because we're not telling it to explicitly print at all here I could tell it to expi explicitly print and then we would get lines 2 and 4 so this is a way to print you can print the line number for every other line but the text for the other lines that yeah, yeah. you can do confusing stuff like that with said but you have to think you have to think about how this is working first right so how this is working let's just go through it real quick so first pull the first line in print out the line then we're going to execute the in command which right now we have dash in so since we have dash in we're not going to print to the output then we're going to go to the next line right and then we're going to execute p which oops excuse me oh what am i doing i'm confusing you all okay so now we're going to do p which prints to the output right and now we reach the end of the command segment but since we have the dash in flag we're not going to dump into the output we're just going to empty the pattern space and move on to the next line now we're at line three yada 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 you, you get the point okay so that's equal sign and in now let's talk about capital letters um, capital letter since we're talking about in already let's put this one first um, capital N what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull let's just do it by itself or let's do it with equal sign what it's gonna do is it's going to pull the next line into the pattern space okay so lowercase n will without without the dash n flag lowercase n will dump the current pattern space to the output and then move to the next line and pull it into the pattern space capital N doesn't do that capital N all it does is it pulls the next line into the pattern space that's all it does it didn't print anything out okay so if we execute this equal uh, capital N we're gonna get um, this output and that's because we're doing um, first pulling this line in we're printing that out then the capital N executes which pulls the next line into the pattern space then we reach the end of commands and the end of commands dumps the pattern space into the output and then we move to the next line then we print that we're on line three yada 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 okay so keep in mind that capital N does not output at all it just pulls the next line into the pattern space okay so what capital P and capital D do is a little bit different um, let's use lowercase n to demonstrate this so now I get duplicates of lines 2 and 4 okay let's walk through this first we're printing the first line into the pattern space then we're gonna execute the in command 
which dumps the output, dumps the pattern space to the output and moves to the next line. Now we're going to execute the p command. So this is kind of a bad example because what the p command does is it prints the first line of the pattern space, only the first line. So if there's three lines here, it would only print the first one. Okay? Does that make sense? So in this example, which I said it's a bad one, it's only going to print out the first line and there's only one line. So you can't really tell the difference between there there is no difference between it and p in this example. Um, so then we're done executing commands, so it's going to dump the pattern space out and move on to the next line. So the output for this command is exactly the same as if I had used little p, right? However, if I use in in little p, I get two of line three, whereas whereas if I use in in, oops, I meant to use a uh, capital N. Oh man, now y'all are really confused. Okay. See, now we're getting different output. And the reason for that is because with the capital N that we're using, we're pulling another line in and we're only printing the first line out. So just to, to make that a little less confusing, first let's delete what we have here. Let's walk through this command. Um, just so you can kind of understand what's going on. So it's going to pull this line in, and then it's going to execute the in command, which will dump out and go to the next line. Then it's going to execute capital N, which will pull this into the pattern space. Then it's going to execute capital P, which will just print the first line to the output. Then we reach the end of commands, which will dump the pattern space into the output. And then we'll go to the next line. And because there's nothing else to do, it will just do that. So the output, let's check our work here. We'll just said in capital N, capital P, and we get that same output, right? Whereas if I did a little p in this case, then we'd grab the first line, and then we're going to execute in, which will dump this out, and grab the next line. Then we'll do capital N, which will pull the next line into the pattern space. Then we'll do P, which prints everything in the pattern space to the output. Then we reach the end of commands, which dumps the pattern space to the output. And then we'll go to the next line, and that just ends up printing out. So in this case, we get different output than before. Oops, excuse me for that. Um, there we go. In this case, we get this output, the same as over here, right? which is different output. So you, you understand now what it, capital N and capital P do. Capital P just prints the first line in the pattern space. That's all it does. Capital N just pulls the next line into the pattern space. Okay, capital D, I bet you can already guess what it does. It does the same thing as capital P in a way, except it deletes, right? So it just deletes the first line of the pattern space. So in this example, we're gonna pull uh, the first line in execute N, which will dump this to the output, and pull in the next line. Then we're going to execute capital N, which will pull the next line into the pattern space. And then we're going to execute capital D, which will delete the first line in the pattern space. Then we reach the end of commands, which will dump the pattern space into the output and move to the next line. Now we're going to print this. We get around back to D, and it'll delete that, and our end, our end output will be as you see over on the right if I haven't made a mistake. And I have. Why have I made a mistake? So at the end it's going to pull this in. Oh, because the explicit in is going to print this out to the output and then move on to the next line and there is no more lines. So that explicit in is why it printed the last line. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, go back and watch this video again. I hope that hasn't been too confusing or too much at once. Um, I hope to make another video as soon as I can, so thanks for watching. Bye.